Y'all already know. I... Really. I mean... This whole thing... It's just getting so damn predictable. I mean, really. How many series are y'all gonna do the same thing with the gender flipping thing? It's just... It's painfully predictable. Painfully. You know what would be unpredictable? If, if they actually lost the fight. And it doesn't even have to be Kung Fu. I mean, at this point, with every show and movie that comes out, women who have no formal training, I'm talking about the characters. We already know the actors, actresses don't. But, but even the characters who have no hand-to-hand -hand training at all are martial arts geniuses. They never lose. That's See, that's the thing about it. It would make it interesting if there was a challenge. Like when I look at the Star Wars series, when I watched the original trilogy, right? Luke didn't even, it, it took the whole second, it took it to the second movie before he even confronted Vader. He didn't, you know, it, 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 you, if Luke would have confronted him in the first movie, he'd have been killed. There was a buildup. Vader was a threat. Luke didn't just come in and wave his hand and win. And, and yet, as soon as we have a female protagonist, that's exactly what happens. There's this, you know, this desire to see women as powerful and these various industries most particularly involving media are looking to capitalize on that of course by catering to female dollars since the 1970s they literally doubled the workforce right and from there now we know black and latina women or black women most particularly you know because uh, they were here in larger numbers were already working right but middle class white women you know with the second wave feminist movement wanted to work but they didn't want to work lower level jobs they wanted to work mid to higher level up white collar jobs so they literally doubled the workforce and created a whole new market force and since then various industries have been falling over themselves to compete for those dollars well, we get that it's capitalism it is what it is but at least at a certain point you guys have heard me say this before in the 70s and the 80s I actually think a lot of the female characters were written better I mean I just rewatched Alien you know, the other night with my son. And I'm telling you, Sigourney Weaver was dope. She was dope. I mean, I watched Halloween every Halloween. I, I love the entire series. Jamie Lee Curtis was dope. And their characters were smart. But they weren't, they just, they just didn't walk in the room and wave a wand and everything just worked in there. I mean, they had to struggle. They had to think. They had to strategize. They had to work through problems. This stuff is so ridiculous. So anyway, if you haven't figured it out, I'm sure you more than have. Uh, you know, they're restarting the Kung Fu series on the CW. At least this time they're using an actual Chinese actress, which I ain't mad at at all. But anyway, so I'll read you the, the, the plot, right? So set in present day, the series follows a young Chinese American woman whose personal issues force her to leave college and make a life changing journey to an isolated monastery in China. Upon her return to America, she starts using her martial arts skills and Shaolin values to protect her community when her hometown of San Francisco is plagued by ongoing crime and corruption by the triad, all while dealing with her estranged family and searching for the assassin who killed her Shaolin mentor and is now targeting her. Right. If you actually, you know, you, you can find the trailer here on YouTube. Um, you know, and you, one of the things you'll notice is that it goes by really fast. Now, I don't know if this is going to be the case in the show, but I can definitely say in the trailer, right? When they show you the Shaolin temple where she's at and everybody got hair down to the, down their back. I'm like, ain't nobody shaving nothing. Really? I kind of like that about the first one. It showed a demonstration, a commitment to something. But anyway, what you, what you, what you'll notice if you pay close attention to the like five seconds that they show her at the temple, everybody there is a woman. I never heard of a Shaolin temple that was all women, but hey, whatever. We, you know, we live with this desire for Amazonia, so it is what it is, right? And of course, you know, she's there. Ah, she doesn't look like her character's aged at all, so she just goes and comes back. See, that was another thing, at least with the original one. He's a, he's a boy when he starts in the Shaolin temple, and he grows into, you know, a very a young man by the time he leaves. Here, she looked like she rolled in, did a couple months, and, and came out with super martial arts powers, you know what I mean? So anyway, you know, they're showing her, she's doing the, you know, typical slow kicks and punches, because, you know, they don't generally hire actual martial artists to act, you know, I guess that's two different skill sets, so, 
you know um, they show her they you know they try to show her face in the midst of her doing the movements and they're really kind of slow and plotting in many ways so there's a lot of camera movement and special effects to make it sound and look like something's actually happening but it, it's it's pathetic and there's predictably a love interest right um you know so a very handsome asian dude who teaches martial arts at the very least i don't know what else he does and of course she impresses him with her superior skill <sighs> right and um and you know it, there was an interesting moment where you seen her you saw you got to see her interact with her family and it was interesting they kind of took the stereotype right of the model minority so here you have this, you know, upper middle class aspiring uh, Chinese family, a lot of pressure on her to, you know, go to law school and, you know, become this white collar, collar professional. And when she says after coming back from Shaolin Temple, she's not interested in that, they actually laugh at her, right? So they're really kind of taking off on uh, some of the more recent films that have been coming out. You know, uh, I can't, yeah, what's the name of the one that came out uh, last year? Uh, was it crazy rich Asians, you know, something like that. So they're kind of taking off that. Um, and even, uh, the latest one, the last, what is it? Raya, the last dragon, they're kind of, so they're building a momentum off of some of these films. And of course you have an American media industry that's trying to appeal to China, you know, obviously, uh, geopolitical re relationships suggest a need to do so. And I ain't mad at that. I just think these kind of shows really need some, uh, an infusion of creativity as far as that. But, um, you know, so all the predictable stuff, she goes around beating up men at every turn and she's catching punches with guys three times her size and weight and throwing them around. And it, it, I mean, again, it's all pretty, what would be unpredictable for me is for her to lose a fight. And it's not that I want to see, uh, you know, the Kung Fu character lose a fight. I just want to see realism in some of these television shows because you got like nurses, you got, you know, secretaries and they're throwing 300 pound men through walls. And I'm just like. I mean, can she at least have a couple martial arts training days before she does this or no, she just has the power to do it because, because, I mean, okay. Uh, I mean, and this is on the heels of Queen Latifah's The Equalizer. And I like Queen as, as a, as a, as an entertainer, as a rapper, uh, even as an actress, why I, I tried to watch The Equalizer. I just couldn't, I mean, even just watching the trailer, I just, I mean, even the scene when she was punching the heavy bag, I was just like, just, just stop, just stop, please. Just, I mean, if you were shooting people from a roof across the street, okay, but stop, you know. Um, but the last thing I'll say both about the equalizer, well, there's, there's a couple more things, actually. There's two more things I want to say. Um, one, just like the equalizer, this didn't need to be named kung fu it didn't you didn't need to revisit this and do a remake and the same with the equalizer you could actually create new care and i said the same thing as far as denzel and the equalizer i didn't need him to be the equalizer for that movie to be good i really didn't it could have just been you know john smith you know what i mean just like uh when we saw um um i mean keanu reeves you know do his latest flicks uh it it, you, it didn't need to be a known entity and that's actually one of the things about Keanu's last venture that I actually liked. I never heard of the character and I'm, I'm blanking on the name. You all know what, which one I'm talking about. And I'm sure some of you will write it in the comments. I, forgive me. I can't, I wasn't planning to talk about it. It just popped up and I couldn't remember the name of the film, but I do remember thinking I've never heard of this character and you know, 15 minutes in the movie, I'm invested. I'm in it. He didn't need to be 007. He didn't need to be, you know, any recognizable character for me to dig the movie. Well, I felt the same way about Denzel and the Equalizer. It didn't need to be named the Equalizer. It could have been anything. And I still would have enjoyed it just as much. And I didn't need the connection. I didn't watch the original Equalizer anyway. So, it, it, you know, but I think the same thing about Queen Latifah's version and this version of Kung Fu. Just create a new genre, create a new character. I mean, there's no connection to the original series anyway, other than you just replace the main actor with a woman. And, and there's nobody that's going to watch this that, that wasn't going to watch it unless it was Kung Fu or The Equalizer. Nobody's going to say, well, you know, since they're remaking the series. No, the people that were going to watch it or are going to watch it, we're going to watch it anyway. So just create something new. And this is my problem with comic books and, and, and even, you know, superhero films, sci-fi films, which I love, as you can tell, right? I don't need you to make white characters black. I don't need you to make male characters 
female. I don't need you to make straight characters gay. Just create new creative characters. And if they're, if they're women, if they're men, if they're straight, if they're gay, I don't care. Just make them well-written. Give us a story beyond that this person is gay, beyond that this person is a trans person and they just woke up with powers. Give us a story that goes with it. Make it more than the fact that this is a woman kicking men four times her weight through walls. Tell us something more than that. And that's the kind of creativity that we're looking for. Last thing I'll say, is, uh, you know, peace to Bruce Lee. I will be an eternal fan of his work, of his ideas. And I, I, one thing I regret is not being able to ever see him play in Kung Fu. Um, but of course, much of his later work, you know, you know, he got to, he, he really got to get back at, uh, you know, Hollywood shout out to him in that regard, but I would have loved to see actually Bruce Lee play in Kung Fu. That would have been tight. That said, I'm glad the actress is Chinese. I ain't mad about that. You know, it was a story about Chinese people. It should have had a Chinese lead. I ain't got a problem with that. I'm just saying, you know, if you're going to start doing gender flipping, at least tell us something creatively different. Uh, show us something different. And, you know, in this regard, it didn't really need to be Kung Fu. But hey, y'all tell me how you like it because I don't think I'm going to be able to get through this. All right, y'all. Hope all is well with you. Hope you enjoy your day. Peace.